United Nations are supposed to be announcing their climate agreement here, so there's a whole bunch of folks demanding more climate action. And we've heard really strong rhetoric from politicians, but not actually really strong commitments to making the changes that we actually need to see. The climate science tells us that we're already locked in to 2.7 degrees of warming. And we don't know what that future looks like. Because we know this agreement's gonna fail, I know, I have to go home and work at the community level. I think that's a place where we still have influence and where we can actually still stop these projects, like the fracking that's happening. Texas is one of the most strategic places to be fighting fossil fuel infrastructure. It is the belly of the beast. 85% of all fossil fuels that are extracted in the United States are refined between New Orleans and Houston. I think that is one of the biggest pinch points if we actually wanted to stop fossil fuels from moving. I like so many things about Denton. I moved here for the music, and I fell in love with this town. It's just a gem. It's really just a jewel in Texas. Uh, the culture, the arts, the music that we have here is just phenomenal. I love Denton. I've grown to love it more and more over the last five years. The people are just friendly and genuine and creative and crazy and weird and everybody's in a band. <laughs> I am. I am in a band. Um, I also just write music and perform on my own. Everybody, not only is everybody in a band, they're in two or three bands, right? So it's the most creative and talented city you could ever live in. The community here is really artistic and really politically aware. It is kind of like a hidden secret in Texas. You know, Texas, the home of the fossil fuel industry. People gonna rise like the water. We gotta slow this chaos down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying stop this fracking now. People gonna rise like the water. We gotta slow this chaos down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying, Stop this fracking now. People gonna rise like the water. We gotta slow this chaos down. Saying, Stop this fracking now. Thanks. Great job, everyone. Our air and water. Our health and safety, our venture. I really appreciate Denton for 
the mentality of the people here. So like I come from Austin and I kept hearing, oh, Denton is like a mini Austin. Um, and I wasn't quite sold at first, but it was actually getting into this issue, this fracking issue, that introduced me to a lot of the, the beautiful people that I know now in Denton. There's such a sense of community. I've come to know people that I don't think I would have ever had the opportunity to know before. I've now lived in Denton longer than I've lived anywhere else in my whole life. Uh, we got married here. Um, I teach here now. I teach voice, music theory, oral skills, piano, the early childhood music. Um, so that's a ton of fun. I've been singing for at least a decade. I actually came here for vocal performance and then found out that my passion for the environment was much greater than my passion for music, so I switched. We noticed that there was a complete silence on campus. No one was talking about fracking, no one was really aware um, that we even had wells on campus. So we decided that we needed to be out there and educate and inform students um, about this issue in our community. So we started North Texas Students Against Fracking with the sole purpose of educating, informing students, letting them know how they could get involved. Like I'm real, I really like your cause and I really want to talk about it. Cool. The water contamination, that was really what kind of sold me. Also, did you know there's fracking on our campus? There's fracking currently going on on campus? On campus by the stadium. I was involved organizing against fracking back when they were trying to put the new regulations in place. Denton's close to my heart and the fight against fracking is really close to my heart. I saw this issue growing here and I, I saw more people getting involved and that the potential is actually here for us to stop this finally. Yeah, Cindy moved back here to help with the campaign. I think she's played a really big role in opening up the communication of the group and asking the questions that not a lot of people were being vocal about. I don't want fracking in my backyard, but I don't want it in anybody's backyard. I mean, I don't understand why our homes have to get fracked for us to decide that we're against that. I struggled with that for a little while of like, maybe we could just get really strict regulations. And I was very quickly disillusioned why the need for a ban, this is it. Because we have reasonable regulations, they simply don't apply. They can be systematically ignored by the industry. And, and seeing no other recourse, uh, after all those years, we decided we have, to, we have to ban this activity. So, but I was the last one, right, to come on board with the ban. I told people early on who wanted to ban it before I thought we should. I told them that I'm not gonna sacrifice Denton on the altar of your idealism, because I thought it would be a sacrifice. I thought no way a ban would hold up I got caught up in the sort of appearance of radicalism that's attached to that, and I thought, I'm not going to go there. We were there to push the envelope, but a lot of our debates were about how far to push it, you know, because if you push it too far, there's a chance you get consigned to the lunatic fringe. But if you don't push it far enough, it's like, why did we exist? So I just didn't really know enough about it or think about it because it had this aura of extremism or radicalism about it. The Denton County Republicans have said that we are radical environmentalists that are trying to cripple the fossil fuel industry, not just here in Denton, but nationally. I think that's a very appropriate description of who I am. <laughs> I am motivated to fight fracking because of climate change. A lot of us were against fracking and wanted a ban several years ago when people that are kind of now leading Frack Free Denton didn't want that and thought, told us that we were being unreasonable, that all we could do is ask for stronger regulations, that a ban would never ever happen. I was nervous about calling for a ban. I was, I was totally buying into these threats of lawsuits, lawsuits, and I was afraid, you know, that maybe, um, maybe it could cause more harm than good. And then I just thought, the only other option is to sit back and just keep letting them bombard our town like this, just keep letting them pollute. Tara Lynn is someone who is holding that balance really well of like trying to be a center between folks that only want to work within the system, only want to vote, and then folks that might be coming from a different perspective who like want to do civil disobedience, don't necessarily trust the police, want to talk about climate change. And I think she's been, I know she's been like, really frustrated, but also really, really patient and a really, really necessary balance for that group dynamic. And this ground game 
would not be possible if it weren't for Tara Lynn. Thanks so much, everybody. It's, um, I've learned so much in the last month. It's, I'll, when, I'm, when I'm 60, I'll be a really capable activist. <laughs> so, thanks, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. All right. I've never done anything like this before. And I guess I just asked enough questions and they said, why don't you do this? <laughs> I'd much rather be teaching kids music. We're all sacrificing quite a bit. We've all been putting in you know, 12-hour work days, not getting a lot of sleep, not really taking care of ourselves because we care so much about this I'll and you want to do more, just call me, <coughs> and I'll get Sam you more. Has your email. <coughs> yeah, you let's exchange email? phone numbers too, we might as well, because okay. I feel like there's a lot that we collaborate on. I moved to Denton to sing, and I was so looking forward to the music program, it was so great. But I started to have asthma um, pretty severely. It, it's gotten progressively worse, and I have to have an inhaler with me. Um, and as a vocalist, that's very concerning because, you know, your lungs and your vocal cords are your, your biggest instrument. And I don't um, experience asthma unless I'm here in Denton. I really want to live here. I want to, like, you know, have my family here and so forth. But um, fracking is the one reason I would leave. It's difficult to sing. It's difficult to do what I came here to do when you can't breathe. I can't thrive here as a singer. So a lot worth fighting for. I have incorporated this stuff into my classrooms to some extent, and you'd have to ask my students whether I do that in a fair way, I hope I do. Students will come up after class and say, I want to get involved, or I want you to know what you're doing. It has inspired me to register to vote, or you know, things like that. It's been really rewarding. All right, everybody, let us begin. Quiz is going on the board, so please uh, grab a scrap of paper. And then I want to talk about Bill McKibben today and global warming and particularly fracking in its relation to that issue. But I like to think about ethics of technology. There's two kinds of questions, categories of questions. I never self-identify as an activist. I consider myself a field philosopher. Right now I'm teaching contemporary environmental issues and bioethics. I teach philosophy of science and technology. And I also teach like philosophy and public policy classes. these ideas, we talk about them in the classroom, and you try to feel what they're really like, but it's mediated through a text and history and all of that. So I knew the theory, I knew the ideas back and front, but I didn't know how they were when they're alive, out there, right, in the moment. And I think what I've done, though obviously people are gonna disagree with me, it's one thing I've done is created a lot of people that hate me. <laughs> so, but from my perspective, what I'm doing is just following the logic of the situation where I think the brunt of the arguments and reason leads you. And now, I know from other perspectives it does. It looks like radicalizing. In a way, I guess it is. But I hope it's justified all along the way, you know? So we know that we are in a civilizational tipping point here where we need to act to reduce our dependence on a fossil fuel-based economy. Right? That's the largest context of this. Okay, let's switch to McKibben then, uh, which is not much of a switch because the same topic, climate change. Here's the math. The Earth's average temperature needs to not change more than two degrees centigrade in order to stay in the safe zone. According to, he says, the vast majority of scientists, the IPCC, we need to keep the Earth's temperature below this two degrees centigrade warming threshold. But with the fracking revolution, we started releasing a whole bunch of this stuff, methane. When he wrote this in 2012, he was really talking about the carbon budget. Now in the piece I had you read, he's talking about methane. He said, we forgot about methane. Methane is something like 86 or more times more potent than CO2 in terms of its global warming potential. We've got a carbon budget that's very limited and we've got an economic system that's premised on shooting way past it. And that's the terrifying new chemistry that we need to add to this terrifying new math, he's saying. I mean, I have had students come up and 
want to get involved. And some of my students became really big leaders during the campaign. And I think that I've had a positive influence on students. I know I've been accused of corrupting the youth, but I think it's been good. You'd have to ask the students <laughs> what their take is on, on Professor Briggle and his zany politics. Am I doing it right as a field philosopher? Right? I don't know. I think so. Right? You want to do the right thing for the right reasons. Fracking had been going on here for years. And all of a sudden now it was right in the heart of the city. As Denton doubles in size over the next 20 years, you're going to see again and again people moving in, being lied to about those gas wells, and, and then all of a sudden saying, what is going on? The people who are exposed to those harms have to be empowered with a decision-making authority about whether to take on that exposure. There's something sickly about the air in Denton. There's something wrong with the environment in Denton. It made me really sad because I love living in Denton. This is an industrial activity, you know, it's questionable whether it should be anywhere at all, right? But it's certainly, certainly not in high, around high concentrations of human beings. Eagle Ridge has been caught dumping illegally into Hickory Creek, which goes into Lake Louisville, which is where we all get our drinking water from. It's actually cheaper for them to break the rules and pay a fine than it is for them to follow regulations. Definitely Eagle Ridge, Devon, um, Vantage, um, Chesapeake has also been fracking here. Can definitely contaminate well water, and that has happened in places, not in Denton, because most of us aren't getting our water from wells, but it has contaminated well water in Parker County, which is just west of Denton, where people can literally light their tap water on fire, in Pennsylvania, in Wyoming, in Ohio, all over the country. Here in Denton, we have some of the worst air quality in Texas, highest rates of childhood asthma. The five counties in Texas, Denton being one of them, that have the most fracking also have the highest rates of breast cancer. In fracking, they use lots of toxic chemicals. We don't get to know all of them. It's their proprietary blend, which is protected, their patent. The fracking industry just doesn't have to be as accountable as everyone else. Fracking is exempt from the Clean Air Act. It's exempt from the Clean Water Act. It's been linked to lots of earthquakes happening here in Texas and in Oklahoma. It's also linked to climate change. It's all interconnected, you know, and you're talking about 17,000 holes they've punched in the ground around here and all those chemicals are pouring into it. It's a huge risk to take, I think, with our groundwater resources. What really concerns me is the amount of water that this process uses, because they can use up to 10 million gallons of city water. Um, and once they use that water, you know, it's contaminated. And what they usually do is inject it into underground wells, um, which has been linked to seismic activity. But just seeing that amount of water being used, and we have over 280 wells here in Denton, so times 10 million per well, um, that's a lot of water. We see what happens when these groundwater resources that we just take for granted become threatened either through contamination or depletion. All of a sudden, entire economies, you know, are at stake at that point. It makes me think of how we are told as consumers um, and as individuals that we have the power to change these things, you know, do everything you can to conserve water, turn the lights off. Um, but the really big consumption of water and energy is not coming from the individual consumer. It's coming from these big industries such as fracking. Right now we have uh, nearly 300 wells within city limits. Any of those can be refracked at any time, contributing to our lousy air. When they're doing the flow back and the flaring process, it's releasing tons of benzene specifically into the air. Uh, high levels of benzene were just found at McKenna Park um, at a playground. But also they're fracking right next to a hospital, a retirement center, a daycare center, and that neighborhood over there. So some of us canvassed that neighborhood in that area. Around the time that I was introduced to the issue of fracking, I spoke to people like Miley Bush and saw how she and her whole family, her children, were being affected by this. Um, that really touched me in a way that made me realize I had to do something about this. We started getting together informational flyers and going door to door. And I just realized, you know what? I want to know what's going on in my neighborhood. This is my life. This is my kid's life. I, I want to be educated. At least then I can make a decision about what I want to do next. And all you can do is try. And we're just going door to door, handing it out. And while I was doing that, that's the moment I realized we had to go for the ban because I stopped and, a, and at a point I looked up and it was about three in the afternoon and a school bus dropped off right next to that frack site. And then of course, right next to another frack site just down the way. And I saw those kids get off and I saw the moms, moms waiting for them, grabbing their hands and just running. 
to get in because it was just horrible, the, the smell, the noise. And, and one of the moms said, I can't believe they would let this happen. The kids can't go outside to play. The odors, the, the fumes are so heavy. And I can testify that just spending some time out there handing out flyers, you know, I couldn't imagine living around that and we have to do something because that could be my daughters, right? Getting off the school bus. And if not my daughters, it's gonna be thousands of other kids, right? In that situation. And then what are we gonna do? Hand out flyers to them, right? That's, a, that's an adequate response. Oh, when this thing blows up or when you smell something bad, call this number. It's ridiculous. It exemplifies exactly what's going to happen in Denton over and over and over again if we don't pass this ban. This is where the original well went up. We've got produced water tanks. This is also where they put the compressor station, which is what you're hearing. It runs pretty constantly. Uh, it's also venting chemicals constantly which makes it dangerous. Don't usually spend time over here. When I hear people say, well, if you're against fracking, you're against jobs, I think, well, if you're for fracking, you're against children. Today, it still boggles the mind that they can put industry this close to houses because unless you've lived it, you don't know This is what remains of what was actually the second set of wells to go up. There were actually two wells. For a while there, the neighborhood was actually surrounded. What you're seeing there, those are the water tanks that store the produced water that comes out. This is the site that's actually closest to my house. This is maybe about 450 feet from my house. But even before they started the actual fracking, when they started bringing in the materials to frack with, they brought in huge amounts of frac sand. And frac sand is, it's silica sand, it's a carcinogen that would blow all over the neighborhood. And there was just dust everywhere. And silica sand's very, very tiny and it gets in your lungs. And once it gets in your lungs, you can't get it back out. It's a lot like asbestos causing mesothelioma. When you have a neighborhood like this that has a lot of small children in it, it gets into their lungs and their lungs are still growing and their lungs are still developing. So we don't know what the long-term impacts are going to be of them being exposed to just even the silica sand, not to mention the chemicals that they then mix with the sand to actually put down the wells. There's actually somebody working there today. And they think it's just fine, but they don't live here. I'm not gonna go another day of my life not wondering what are the health effects that my children are going to feel now or in the future. What harm have we done long term because of the fracking? The only thing they are concerned with is their bottom line, and they're going to do the work as cheaply as possible, as quickly as possible. They're going to cut corners. It's going to increase their risks, and they don't care one whit about me or my family. They don't. And you can't unknow what you know, and I can't stay silent if someone's being harmed. My home is sandwiched in between two pad sites that were fracked earlier this year. If the industry truly believes the myriad health problems that are occurring in my neighborhood and areas like it aren't fracking related, then they should have to prove it. They came into my neighborhood, and then my kids got sick. Then the coughs got worse. Then the nosebleed started. They need to prove to me that it's not because of what they are doing, not the other way around. They don't care about Denton, its people, or its economy. They only care about getting as much gas out as cheaply as possible. Tonight, you have an opportunity to stand on the right side of history by protecting your citizens from fracking. It is time to improve the future of Denton so no other mama has to feel like I do and worry like I do and cry like I do. The world is watching, and my neighborhood, my family, and my children are counting on you to pass this ban. That's it. No other comments? We have a, a motion and a second on the floor to oppose the ban in the ordinance as presented. Is that correct, to, Madam City Attorney? To deny the ordinance. To deny the ordinance. Then it shall be called for an election. The motion to deny is approved five to two. Thank you, girl. Did you have your cough medicine this morning? I can do my butt. I'll go first. Okay, chill out. Let's Me. take some antihistamine and decongestant stuff too. Don't make a mess, please. 
Now swallow. Don't make a mess. My six-year-old son was asthmatic during all of that process. He has upper respiratory issues. It's something we have to keep an eye on, which took about a month because they were doing three different wells. It just kept getting worse and worse, and all of a sudden his asthma was no longer under control. All of a sudden they're having nosebleeds. You know, the kids had to have CT scans and all kinds of things done because they couldn't figure out, why is he coughing so much? Absolutely baffles me. And I hear these people screaming about, literally in some cases, screaming about how we're taking their mineral rights away and I've got, I've got, you know, thousands of dollars under your feet that now I can't get to and I think, well, I have thousands of dollars in medical bills that I can't pay now because my children have been impacted by your irresponsibility. You know, at what point do we stop? I was going to the meetings at the greenhouse, the early ones, and a lot of them were kind of presentations, different aspects of why Fracking was bad for Denton, including the economical case. And it felt necessary to tell at least one member of the board, it feels like you're doing presentations to people that already agree with you. Like, we're here, we're at the meetings, we're ready to be a part of this campaign. We already agree with you. I'm sold, fracking's bad. It has opened up a lot, and I think that's a good thing. There's no way that just a very small group of people can have ownership over this campaign and expect it to be successful. And I know some people have been frustrated, and, and maybe rightfully so, that there hasn't been more larger group, bottom-up decisions in this campaign. I think, the I've tried to indicate, the more we've gone along, the more that's happened. I think it's beautiful how everyone has come together, and it has, it has really expanded. The meetings are no longer run by the board members. Um, it's much more inclusive. That was a, a very beautiful moment for the Frack Free Denton movement. But I felt frustrated that night that it had taken that long to get to that point where we pushed all the tables together and we were speaking as a group, not being spoken to. It does feel more like a dialogue now than it used to. So I just kind of want to like lift up and honor all of the work that everyone has been doing because it's crazy and it's awesome. Um, and it looks really different for everyone. All the, all the volunteer hours that have gone into making this thing work. Editorials, I mean everyone, yeah, y'all hosted events, the house parties, and every, just everything. Yeah. <laughs> the Light Brigade, everything, everything. It's just been, this entire campaign is just made up of like, our contributions and volunteer work and it's really, really, really amazing and really beautiful and no matter what happens on Tuesday, really that part can't be, you know, they can't take that away. <coughs> that makes me just want to stress, I know I've brought this up before, but just I really, really hope that these meetings continue after the election, no matter what happens. There are certain folks within the campaign that I know that we don't always get along. For sure, we definitely, we always interact civilly, but we don't always have the same opinions. Even though I disagree with him, I don't want to dismiss their opinions because some of these people have led successful campaigns, environmental campaigns in Denton, which is not something I've done. I'm also trying to respect their experiences. Not only Briggle, but lots of other folks within the Frack Free Denton movement have kids or have more responsibilities than me and are weighing a lot of things that I'm not weighing when they're making their choices of what kinds of risks they want to take. I'm trying to walk a line of presenting options and encouraging people to take risks without also being pushy or pushing people too far out of their comfort zones. You know, a lot of the younger people in the movement have been challenging the way that this movement has been um, operated up until this point because, you know, either way that the vote goes, we're going to have to continue the community momentum. Last push for tomorrow. Um, there's some things that I just want to share with everybody. It's going to rain, <laughs> which could work in our favor. So that, that's OK. But we just got to go out there and brave the polls. Um, if anybody has a poncho, bring, bring a poncho. If anyone has an umbrella, bring an umbrella. Be polite, but be bold. Don't, don't be intimidated by by the opposition, um, get the message in there because they're purposely trying to confuse people and we're purposely trying to clarify. So, um.
Sir, are you going to vote? Do you want to read the language for the fracking ordinance? This will be on the ballot. This is going to be on the bottom of your ballot if you're registered here in Denton. It's a fracking ban ordinance. Have you read about that? I have. I've actually studied it. Great. I think you're wrong. All right. Good luck. Thank you. There's no way. We're never, ever going to have as much money as them. We're never going to be able to raise as much money as them. I mean, our secret weapon has been canvassing. It's going door to door. You know, they can send out advertisements all over, but we're the ones having face-to-face -face conversations with our neighbors, and that's what's going to work. So I think they're very afraid of what's going to happen if Denton a city in North Texas is able to set a precedent of banning fracking from their community. I think they're very scared of that. There was always that fear that maybe we were doing it totally wrong or maybe we hadn't thought of some major possibility. So I hope it doesn't prove to be naive, but I, I feel really hopeful about this. I want to be able to say I did everything I possibly could. I don't know how we'll do. I can't sleep at night. Thinking about this, I so want us to win. Ladies and gentlemen, the city of Denton just sent the following statement to the media in light of early voting results regarding the proposition to ban hydraulic fracturing on behalf of Mayor Chris Watts. As I have stated numerous times, the democratic process is alive and well in Denton. Hydraulic fracturing, as determined by our citizens, will be prohibited in the Denton city limits. The City Council is committed to defending the ordinance and will exercise legal remedies that are available to us. Blah, 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 blah. We win. Check Twitter or Facebook or something. There's a lot more they said on there. But you guys are freaking me out. We won! <laughs> we won. We banned fracking in Denton. It feels really good. It's something that I've wanted for the last five years and that I've been told isn't possible by all sorts of people. So it feels really good to show that it is possible. It was like a dream come true. It was a dream I never really let myself believe could possibly come true, but I just wake up smiling. <laughs> I can't believe we did it, you know? I'm still stuck between this like, wow, look at everything we've just accomplished and we're being thrown very quickly into the next phase of this whole fight. We'll see legislators bringing up legislation to try to limit local control or even eviscerate it entirely. I do not think that will have success because that's politically so dangerous for them. I mean, nobody wants to lose local control. And it's also so contradictory for many of these folks who are anti-big government to come in and, and do their big government thing. In many instances, we hear about these extreme setbacks is because of health and safety is the claim. And if health and safety were the real issue, you wouldn't be building houses next to wells. And number two, no one would be buying them. A lot of times these ordinances are not getting based on sound science or being based on misinformation that's being presented in communities here that just leads to unreasonable circumstances. Um, the most challenging thing to me is confronting lies. Um, it's really hard, it's really hard to watch someone say a bold-faced lie. It's really, really, um, it incites a lot of anger and emotion, obviously, in me. Um, but it's, it's even worse when they're lying for the sake of a profit and when they're lying to the very people that they're harming. So it really reveals the state of things, you know? We followed all the rules, we followed all the proper steps, and it didn't work. 
what this bill is saying to our community and to communities across Texas is that they do not respect the vote of the people. They do not believe in the democratic process, and that should not rest well with anyone in the United States of America. Of course, I had hope that our vote would be respected because that's what we're taught our whole lives. The situation has really revealed the level of corruption and the level of control that the corporations have in this country. And it was just sickening. I mean, I was literally sick coming out of Austin that day. I think I, the, that energy down there, the, uh, the crass corruption of it all really sunk into me. And in the meantime, we got to figure out fracking in Denton still. It's like after all this time, here we are back where we started. That makes me take a step back and realize like, oh, maybe this process does, is not really working for us and it's not really put in place to work for us. Oil and gas makes the rules in Texas and we know that. And when Denton had its win, they changed the rules. So I'm not, I'm not that surprised by that. If there wasn't all the other like actions and organizing happening, I'd be really, really disheartened because one of the last meetings I was at, it seemed like people's strategies moving forward were kind of like, let's just vote harder next time or vote differently next time or, well, we got to organize and vote all of these people out. And that's a pretty disempowering strategy after the ban passing. I mean... It's arrogantly and so short-sightedly been suggested that if we don't like it, we should just move. And that's, that is the most insulting suggestion I've heard yet from our legislators. This is our home, and you, you don't just abandon it, you know? So we'll, fight, we'll keep going. And this is what community looks like. This is what it looks like when a community says, we're not down, we're not done. When we're supposed to be at our most down, that's when we're gonna come together, that's when we're gonna gather, that's when we're gonna show up. I'm so proud to be a part of this town. We won a hard battle and got a vote on the record that the people of Dutton do not want fracking in their city limits. We've made a statement and we've changed the conversation drastically, not only around the country, but around the world. And they say, if Texas can do it, then we can do it. <laughs> Fracking was invented in North Texas. And we have said, we don't want this in our city limits. And what HB 40 has done is it has said, your voice doesn't matter. Your vote doesn't matter. We're going to force fracking back upon the very community that voted it out. We're going to force Denton to be a sacrifice zone. We're going to force you to be exposed to chemicals that are known to cause cancer. And we're here today to say that our story continues. That is not where this is. OK, thank you. Uh, Tara Lynn, can we give another round of applause for Tara Lynn? is a builder of communities. Without her, this doesn't happen. So I really appreciate what she's done. Also, uh, another round of applause for George and all the artists and musicians who have been the lifeblood of this movement. Thank you all so much. I am not an artist, I'm a philosopher. And I'll give you just a quick lecture. Many people don't know that Aristotle devoted two of 10 chapters in his politics to the subject of friendship. And what he was talking about was political friendship, which is something we don't have much of today. But he actually saw it as key to what it means to be human and to be a community, is to have friends. And when I look around, I think that's what we form, is a political friendship. And that doesn't mean friendships around ideological lines or friendships around partisan lines. It means a friendship around a shared sense of place as a group. So, thank you. Fracking returns to Denton tomorrow. That's right. Um, so we are in a, uh, a dark period here in the story, but this isn't the end of it. The fact that you all are here shows that to me. Okay. Um, We're still exploring some options, and but a lot of people are asking us, where do we stand? I, I think just first of all, put it into the space, like what our common goals are. I mean, yeah, our 
legal options have been exhausted. We are hoping to engage in a strategy and are already engaging in a strategy of civil disobedience, physically delaying fracking, physically delaying the destruction while giving our legal institutions time to catch up and make right what is right. Our goal is to also radicalize people because we don't believe in the system because it just failed us. So that's just me being really honest about who I am. I don't, I didn't believe in voting while we were doing the vote, but I was willing to participate and show up for that and build relationships. I was extremely surprised to be doing a civil disobedience training in Denton. I've helped with those trainings in other places and I never thought that I would be doing it where I actually live. I think the most effective way to organize our community is to build people power. And that's not just like a term that I'm throwing around, but like, how are we actually going to determine what we want for ourselves? How are we building power within our own community? And I think it is our first step from taking the power back from not only from Austin and those oil dynasty families, but also from our local city council. So that's what I'm passionate about. And if it comes in the form of civil disobedience or direct action, that's how, that's, that's what it is. So our first question is, what is direct action? Taking collective action to change our circumstances without handing our power to a middle person. Direct action at its core is about our power. For me, civil disobedience is never a goal. It's a tactic that I feel like is appropriate to utilize when all your other options have been exhausted and you're living in a situation of unjust laws. Direct action isn't about getting arrested. Direct action can look a lot of ways. Civil disobedience is breaking an unjust law, a law that we believe to be undressed. It's one of the things I think is good about this fracking ban is we've created a conversation about democracy. I want to see that sustained because I think that's really important. And I've been exposed through some good friends to literature recently on, on anarchy. And I think that makes some good points. Freedom actually doesn't exist in the ways we think it exists in our society. We think we live in the land of the free, but we don't have a lot of capacity for self-determination in our society. Anarchy is not saying everybody do whatever the heck they want. It's saying to recognize our interdependence and that freedom actually comes about through mutual exchanges rather than through bureaucratic institutions. That then opens up, I think, a way to imagine, to reimagine our relationships with one another. That's kind of a cool question, I think. That's, that's what gets me thinking about anarchy. So not just Adam Briggle, but so many people that I didn't expect to be there were like, sure, I'm down for that, I'll try it. So again, there's not a right answer, but these things are vulnerable. And if I was a cop, and I grabbed any of these fingers, fingers exposed, I can get you to let go, yep. right? So it's knowing what's vulnerable and how to protect them. There's not a right answer of what you want to do, it's just knowing what is vulnerable, right? So these things, any of these things? Now that the voting part of the campaign has passed and lots of folks see how our system works and that they have not only had their vote just taken away from them, not only first the lawsuits, but now their vote has just completely been overturned. And most recently, city council has repealed the ban. So I think after all of that, people feel good about embracing a direct action strategy. How does it feel? Great. Good. Feels good? Oh, okay, group. Okay, group. Feels good. Y'all hear that? <laughs> good. Oh, we shall volunteered now. Dang. The ends feel vulnerable. The ends feel vulnerable. The ends are vulnerable. And so with that, you want to think about who are you putting on the end, right? People feel excited about embracing civil disobedience tactics. They understand that HB 40 is an unjust law. That's the definition of civil disobedience, is breaking a law that you disagree with and you think is unjust. It is possible for us to raise the social, political, and economic cost of fracking in Denton. Of course I want to overturn HB 40. Of course it would be great if we elected all new anti-fracking people. But those things are going to take years. Like, it's not our reality right now. And people live by frack sites right now. So what are we going to do? Sir, 
really? You're gonna run me over, yes, really? If you live in Denton, we will be enforcing our ban here. Expect resistance. I don't know where you think you're about to go. Well, we would prefer that you move out of the way, stop blocking their sidewalks, stop blocking their trucks, and stop blocking their contractors that they're paying several hundred dollars an hour for. So I'm going to give you a chance to protest. You've expressed it, your opinions. Um, I'm not here to express my opinion for or against Frank Free Denton. Uh, I'm here to uh, hopefully mediate this situation. We have no other choice but to enforce our ban ourselves. You do, you do have a choice. You have the opportunity. Do those to people have a protest? choice that live right over there that are having their water poisoned by the, this company? You have the right do those people have a choice? To protest off of this do those people have a choice to drink clean water? Right there, those houses that are really close to these frack wells. Do they have a choice? They did have a choice at the ballot box. They voted for the ban. You could stand with us. I understand the things that the city of Denton has passed. I also understand that the higher authority. Got the three that are sitting in won't move. We need to uh, move out of the way and allow this truck to come through. We're just here to stop fracking. I understand. I mean, we're standing in solidarity with our community. I couldn't think of a better place to be right now. Mm -hmm. I have more of a responsibility to do what's right than to comply with this unjust law. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're trying to work with you. Okay, you work with us, we'll work with you. But if not, we're going to start trespassing people off the property. Will you please uh, move off of this property, please? My intent is to stay here until 7 p.m. to stop working from happening. All right, Mr. Briggle, you are under arrest for the offense of criminal trespassing. Please stand up and come with these officers, please. Your efforts are commendable. You, you got a lot of people in Denton to support your cause. And uh, I think that you have... Uh, you should be really proud of what you've accomplished. in your life where you said this is wrong it may be the law but it's wrong that's the point where we are uh, you, un you understand that the the fracking ban it would be illegal for me I could get charged you could if I enforced the ban you there could. is no ban anymore because it was preempted yeah, by state you, law you could. so that would be a risk that if you're willing to take would be incredible for the city of Denton well, but I'm saying it's it would be I would be violating the law to, to try to enforce yes, that law. You know, I have a job to do, they have a job to sure. do, and that's that's sure why we're here. Yeah. So thousands of people voted for our fracking ban. So thousands of people in our immediate community and, and of course across the country support us. These cops can stop the twenty of us from being in that road. When everyone that voted for the ban is in that road. Those cops and the frackers really can't work and they can't stop us, right? So that's the goal. You know, we're the citizens of Denton. The movement against fracking is strong. 
and we're not going away. We don't want to put people in jail for obstructing the highway, okay? It's about the roadway right now. I also think that this direct action component of the movement can get around front any other fracking that is proposed in Denton. We actually do have the power to stop fracking, that we don't have to wait for another election, that we don't have to wait till HB 40 is overturned, that if we want it bad enough, we can stop fracking ourselves. We'll see you in court. If you try to frack here anyways, even though, you know, the people of Denton have spoken. So if you try to frack here anyways, you try to bring your fracking trucks in here, you try to set up your rigs, we will stop you and we will be right. What traditionally will look like civil disobedience will actually be enforcing the law. Frack off gas holes, like bring it, Denton's ready. I understand that different people are compelled to be a part of this movement for different reasons, but I am not worried about my property values. I'm worried about our future. I'm worried about climate chaos and the destruction that we're bringing to our planet. I know that I personally want to have children someday and that I'm 24 years old and I'm not hoping to have them while I'm in my 20s. So I'm looking six or seven years out and I know that the current climate situation is crazy enough that we have about 10 years to address it and to rein in our carbon burning um, or else we don't know what a livable future looks like on this planet. So it's putting me in a position where I'm wondering if my children have a future before they're even born.